Welcome to the launch of the brand new Da Vinci Spartan. Yes, the 160mm travel enduro bike with some really interesting changes from the previous Spartan. I've got one here in the studio to talk you through, plus I'll be taking it for a ride. Plus, a chat with the engineers out in Canada to get a bit more information on the background and development of this really cool chassis. Plus, chatting to EWS winning athlete Greg Callahan uh, to hear how he got on with riding the thing. We've seen some glimpses of this bike at the EWS, but here it is, the production model. This is the Da Vinci Spartan Carbon XTR model we have here. It's full carbon frame, 160mm travel, 29er. Biggest difference you'll see from the old bike is, in fact, this high pivot dolly. Yeah, so high pivot bikes, right? So bearing in mind that most mountain bikes have got pedal of things, so the best compromise has always seemed to be a lower pivot point. But by having a high pivot point, your rear wheel axle actually moves backwards and around those bumps. So technically, on rougher trails, you're gonna be faster when you're battering through stuff. The downside though is with a high pivot, you get a lot of chain growth. So to manage that, what they've done is route the chain with an idler wheel over that pivot point. So what that means is effectively it's gonna pedal as if it has a low pivot, yet you have the bump eating capability of a rearward axle path associated with a high pivot. Uh, and also at the back there, you've got a split pivot. So this bike is a single pivot with a linkage to activate the shock. Now, traditionally on single pivot bikes, it can be a bit tricky when it comes to braking because the braking forces uh, known as anti-rise can be affected uh, when you're using the brake, which means the suspension won't always feel as good. By having that split pivot design on the rear, you're effectively completely isolating the effects you have when you're using the brake, uh, which means you've got an incredibly supple suspension action uh, and you can just plow through stuff. Other changes from the previous Spartan, we've got a longer reach, slacker head angle, steeper seat tube, but also now we've got chain stay sizes that actually sort of change with the size of the frame. Yeah, um, modern geometry on bikes really has come a long way and it's really cool to see just how far Da Vinci are pushing this. So there's four sizes. So from a size small up to the extra large, you've got the reach factor. Uh, that's essentially sort of your, your horizontal measurement on the bike. So that ranges from 445 up to 510. Uh, so looking at, I'd be looking at the 510, that's a really good healthy size. Now, when it comes to head angle, you've got 64 and a half, which is adjustable to 65, uh, with the little chip that you have down here below the shock, just means you can adjust the position on the bike slightly and your bottom bracket height there you have different chainstay lengths on the bike. So actually that's super important to say uh, because a lot of people just grow the front end of the bike and they don't proportionally grow that rear. Uh, so from 425 up to 435 millimeters, depending on the size there. And finally, the seat tube angle uh, is hovering around 77 degrees. It does vary very slightly between the sizes there. Uh, but the good thing about this is whatever size bike you're riding, the whole point is when you're sat in a saddle with a saddle at full height, it's designed to keep your body weight really between the wheels. Uh, essential for climbing those long, steep stages. You can also fit a coil shock on this bike, and that does work well with this bike. It's designed to be progressive, so that works nicely. Uh, you've got an idler in there, so it's nice and quiet and efficient. Plus, you've got a 34.9 post in there, so large diameter yes. to reduce the flex and actually for longevity. I've got to say, actually, it looks like a really easy bike to work on as well. So you've got partially internal cable routing, nice big channels to feed those hoses straight in at the top of the bike here. And they come out on a seat tube. Something I particularly like is the one that comes in behind that idler wheel there. So not only is that held in place, it's not going to move around, but the idler wheel itself has a chain guide built into it. So really cool. Also, it pleases me to see a threaded bottom bracket shell on here, which means, again, easier to work on the bike. Plus, it's got double sealed enduro bearings on there. Uh, let's not forget that our Canadian friends sometimes ride in equally as bad conditions as we do. Anyway, it's time for me to ride this bike, take it to trail, where hopefully they'll be nice and dusty.
My first impressions when I jumped on the new Spartan is it feels like a 160mm travel 29er enduro bike. The main advantage of high pivot point systems when descending really is down to that rearward axle path. Essentially, this means the rear wheel moves in the direction of the impact, especially with square edge hits like root sections and rock gardens. It really does help the bike maintain momentum over the rough terrain as it doesn't hook up so much and therefore carry speed much better. And surprisingly efficient for a bike with 160mm travel, but it really comes alive when you do hit that really fast rough stuff and that high pivot comes alive and it really starts to make sense of why you'd want to ride a bike like this on the Enduro World Series. And it takes a team of engineers, test riders, and pros to help develop this bike. This year at the EWS, we've got Keegan Wright, George Arastal, and Greg Callahan all riding this bike. And actually, I caught up with Greg, the three times Enduro World Series winner, to get his impressions on the new bike. goes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was me after my first run on the prototype. You know, the way DaVinci have come with this one, they, they've thunk outside the box a little bit. You know, using the develop the downhill team for some of the development and then, you know, I was lucky enough to get involved in the real early stages. Do you find it easy to communicate what you want from a bike to the engineers? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, being there with the engineers riding the bike because, you know, I don't understand the engineering speak, but all, everyone who works in DaVinci is a rider, so when I come off the hill and I say how it feels, they know what, they can translate that into the, you know, what they see on the computer. So I think it's good for everyone to kind of get that, that understanding. Um, you know, and the big selling point for me on this, when we, that, that first test we had was that I did timed runs compared to the old Spartan. And I did a run on the old Spartan that was like on the limit, perfect, like race run, like I was really happy with it. And then I did a run on the prototype and I was like, I probably could have pushed harder. It didn't feel that fast, and it was faster. So, you know, it, ju it just felt like the ceiling of speed just got lifted, and you could just push push a bit further and ride a bit faster. Was there a big difference in the feel with a high pivot, and was it easy to get on with? That's what I was surprised at when I got this one, was how it felt closer to a normal bike than I expected. Um, you know, it still felt lively and playful, and I didn't really notice any downsides to the high pivot. I just Noticed that it was just so much more stable and calm, so you could, you know, through the rough stuff, it just, it just goes. <laughs> Good luck this weekend. Thank you. <laughs> now it's time to dive deep into the development story of the brand new Da Vinci Spartan to hear exactly how this high pivot, rock smashing monster of a bike came into development. So the Spartan has been in development for about three to four years. It started in 2018. And this really gave us the opportunity to do a lot of prototypes and test out our ideas on the suspension. We were looking at how to improve the split pivot design. We've been working with this since uh, 2011. It's a great system, works really well at separating the acceleration forces from the braking forces, um, it served us well on all of our bikes, but we were looking for something um, that would be more of a drastic change. In the frame design, we wanted something that people that would get on the bike would see the difference right away. Whether they're a good rider, they're a professional athletes, we wanted everyone to, to feel that big difference. So we were evaluating many different options. Uh, and when we started, we had uh, basically seven different kinematic layouts uh, on the table and then we had to weigh pros and cons and did different prototypes to test out these ideas. We were seeing high pivot DH bike creeping back up on the, the DH circuit. So it was interesting, but for us the question was, how uh, would that be behave on a, a smaller travel bike, something that you pedal all day? The HP designs have been around for a super long time. We've seen a lot of concepts using HP. Um, but when we were trying to apply it to the bikes that had a bit less travel, uh, we went back to the design table, looked at these previous designs that we did, took all that was learned 20 years ago and apply it to the, the new bike. The benefit of the high pivot design is really 
uh, it really shines when you're in the rough stuff and you get um, bigger hits and having that rear wheel uh, clearing the obstacles is really what allows you to carry momentum, carry speed uh, through the rough. And these advantages, they far overweigh um, any of the, of the drawbacks that were some of our initial concerns, uh, be it some added weight or some added drag. How did this first prototype came about? Of course, when, when you look at the, the P1, that, that gray frame that we've, we've, we did, it's pretty artisanal. It doesn't look all that good. It's not optimized at all. Um, but what we wanted to do with this one is isolate something very specific, which is the reward axle path and how would that behave on an enduro bike. So for that, we use the factory we have here making already the, the aluminum uh, Spartan. Uh, we kept the same thing such as leverage ratio, the geometry. So that was the first prototype and we're using our made in Canada Spartan front triangle to which we added um, a custom rear end. So we, we welded that, uh, that new pivot placement so we could test the, higher, the high pivot and the rearward axle path. Uh, some of our test riders, typically I would say they're pretty factual about what they will uh, tell us about how a bike behaves when they're testing new things that we're bringing up. But it was a different story when, when they got on the HP design first. It's, uh, we, we could really see the excitement. It, it was a big difference. So despite how raw that P1 looks, um, it, it was definitely something that we, we see it was worth pursuing. What's the, what's the perks of using a high pivot matched with a split pivot design? Well, the, that's a very good question. You know, split pivot uh, has always been with us and it really helped us to um, separate the braking forces from the acceleration forces and it keeps doing that. Um, and using the high pivot design, we're able to further uh, optimize the, how the pedaling forces act on the suspension. Uh, because we have all that added control over the positioning of the idler. So um, diminishes the, the effects of the chain on the suspension platform. Ce qui a été très positif aussi quand on, a, quand on est parti dans la conception du Spartan, c'était le fait de, de partir justement avec cette idée d'ajouter un high pivot. Et puis ça, ça nous amène des, des chemins inusités. Donc, euh, c'est assez excitant de se dire qu'on va pouvoir enfin développer des choses vraiment très distinctives. Euh, et puis en même temps, bah, c'est aussi le fait de pouvoir fusionner à la fois le high pivot avec notre split pivot. Et puis suite à cette fusion, donc, il y a vraiment un effort pour rester léger et fin, pour avoir la bonne rigidité adéquate, exactement ce qu'il faut. Et puis en même temps, pouvoir facilement continuer de nourrir notre garantie à la vie parce qu'on est très confiant dans nos produits. So from there, we moved to our second wave of prototypes, uh, which was really to address some of the concerns we had, make some refinements on the concept, uh, test the different options of idler positions. Three things we had pinned on the wall from day one in that project were uh, maintenance and function that we wanted to be as smooth as a normal bike, um, and then Durability, it's, it's another big one. It's a, it's a bike that's meant to be uh, ridden hard and also raced. So when you're purchasing a race bike, you want something that's reliable. You want it to be durable. And of course, drag was another one. Uh, the Having the anti-squat tune separately from the rest of the suspension was uh, enabling us to have a very supportive pedaling platform. So we would recommend leave it your shock in the open position because you can benefit from that added traction while going up, but you still have a very supportive pedaling platform that for a big bike, it won't be bobbing. Then of course, we're using a BB type uh, low friction bearing in the idler. So it's seeing the same type of revolution as the bottom bracket bearing. So it really it was a, and, and using a low friction uh, seal really made it uh, run smoothly. Of course, the idler and front ring alignment is key here to make sure we reduce drag as much as possible. In terms of maintenance and function, we've worked so hard in, in the last few years to have bikes that are quiet. That's definitely something that we wanted to keep going. So we went on a teeth profile. That's something we tested extensively. We were satisfied with, uh, with the final teeth profile. That's when we also tested them on the test bench for um, for durability and making sure they can uh, they can last for a long time. 
Well, the lab is a big part of our development process uh, because it allows us to validate some of the things that we see out in the field, but uh, replicate the, the, the wear that we see in a couple of seasons of writing really quickly in the matter of uh, one or two days. The way we, we designed the idler testing was to make it in the worst condition that the idler could see. Uh, so that would be in the biggest amount of force you're putting on the pedal. Also, the, the idler test allowed us to replicate multiple seasons of wear in the span of about 20 hours. Uh, we're adding that part, but we don't want our customers to have to buy 10 of them per year. So the material that we chose, as well as the coating, were, uh, were crucial in, in that aspect. We ended up on steel with a special coating that will uh, help with corrosion and make sure it rust proof. You'll be replacing your third front ring, then is when you look at replacing your idler. C'était distinctif parce qu'il avait cette projection à la fois de, des haubans et de l'amortisseur qui suivait arrière. Et en fin de compte, ça donnait une image très dynamique, une image très euh, guerrière qui était prête à partir vers l'avant et puis à bondir. C'était le premier Spartan. Le deuxième Spartan, il a évolué un petit peu plus avec une, un réaménagement des éléments. Euh, le chuck a été repositionné à la verticale. Euh, et puis en même temps, ça a permis beaucoup de petites choses comme abaisser le centre de gravité, ça donnait plus de rigidité un petit peu plus, euh, plus de, de, de simplicité. Le porte-gourde, en fin de compte, ça donnait un espace pour pouvoir en fixer un, ce qui était une très bonne chose et très demandé. Et euh, en fin de compte, ce que ça donnait par contre d'un point de vue style, c'est que ça figeait un petit peu plus le vélo. Il avait l'air un petit peu plus freiné, il avait l'air un peu plus planté. Donc ce qu'on a essayé d'introduire, c'est vraiment l'aspect de, de, de la griffe. Donc euh, on vient mettre des éléments plus qui vont chercher l'avant, comme euh, justement le support entre le, le seat tube et puis le top tube, comme la bascule et puis aussi le, le support de choc en bas. Donc c'est vraiment le, cette petite signature de griffe qui vient redonner un petit peu plus de dynamisme et puis encore une fois la griffe avec le symbole guerrier pour le Spartan. The end result is a system that pedals really well with very very minimal drag to a point where it's almost not noticeable. But what you will definitely notice though is, is how well it goes when you're pointing it down, downhill and, and riding it in the rough stuff. That, that is where the most of the difference will, you'll notice. Et enfin, le Spartan 3, ben c'est vraiment un, un énorme changement géométrique. C'est vraiment une révolution avec l'apport la, la, du high pivot. Ça amène des, des, des possibilités. Puis en fin de compte, le Spartan 3, euh, la dernière itération qu'on vient de. qu'on qu qu se prête à sortir, c'est vraiment euh, notre vélo le plus révolutionnaire de la gamme parce que il est très orienté à pivot, il est à la fois confiant et en même temps très capable. So how we tested to make sure the bike delivered the goods. Uh, there is a few different things. Uh, of course, I think one of the main point is the clock doesn't lie. Uh, that's definitely something that we looked at. These uh, the Spartan is a race bike and of course the goal with that bike is to shave seconds of a race run. So if that's what we're able to accomplish in testing, then it proves we're going in the right direction. We, we were seeing clear difference. We're about four seconds faster on a two minute and a half run, uh, which was pretty impressive. Uh, but what was more interesting for us was the fact that uh, the rider, like his feeling on the bike. And that is something that we've noticed with test riders feedback, uh, athlete feedback, and even our DH rider feedback was the same is that system really enable you to be in control. So you feel like you're calm and composed, although you're going actually faster. We've provided lifetime warranty on, on our carbon mountain bike uh, since we started making them. Uh, so we actually provide lifetime warranty on all of our bikes. Standing behind our product and making products that are durable has always been key for us and something we really believe in. There you go, there's all the information about the brand new DaVinci Spartan. Thanks to DaVinci and for Greg Callahan for answering my questions. Give us a thumbs up if you love the look of this brand new bike. Yeah, and do get involved in the comments underneath. Let us know what you think of the bike, and actually more importantly, what do you think about high pivot bikes? Do you think that is the way forwards for big mountain and enduro racing?